Hello everybody, my name is Kirby. Well, I've actually been to Sabah like two weeks ago and I had quite a number of really really nice adventures there. Sabah is actually one of the places that's just really really good with seafood. Well, I went to visit the seafood market there and actually got myself two different fishes to make two different episodes. And today, we are going to feature one of the fish that we bought from Sabah. The special ingredient that we have for today is this. This is called a golden snapper, Lutjanus Johnny. Well then, with all that said, we are going to create something pretty much normal out of this. Okay everybody, the special ingredient that we have for today is this. This is called a golden snapper. The scientific name of this fish is called the Janus Johnny. As what I mentioned just now in the opening, I have actually been to Sabah like two weeks ago for a runs. And what happens next is that I dropped by a fishing market. So what I did is that I bought this fish to make an episode here. This fish is more or less like almost everywhere around the Southeast Asian waters and the Australian waters. It lives pretty much all around nearby all the corals and it's eating all those typical shrimp, squids and algae and whatever small other fishes around. And because it's actually quite common, this fish has become a really really popular game fish all around Sabah, Sarawak, Malaysia and Australia. Another thing I'm going to say about this fish is that it actually has another name. It's called the John Snapper. One thing I kind of wondered is about why is this fish called the John Snapper? Why can't it be called some other kind of like maybe Nelson Snapper or Ken Snapper or whatever? Based on my research, what happens is there was actually this guy, his name is Christopher Samuel John in the year 1700. What he did is that he is actually some sort of German missionary who actually collects a lot, a lot, a lot of different kind of species of reptiles and fishes. Eventually, John actually collaborated with the naturalists to have the records of a lot, a lot of species of aqualife, plants and reptiles. And when he submitted the fishes to the naturalists, some of them actually says, oh, this is a new species, but what do I name it? Okay, fine, whatever, I'll just name it after John. So that's how this fish actually got the name John Snapper. If you look at his collections, a lot of the scientific names that is found by this guy has a scientific name called Johnny. This fish is pretty much common in the Southeast Asia and of course it has been used in a lot, a lot of different kinds of cuisines like um, I know it can be used as a steam, can be used as a bake, can be used as a fried or whatever. With all that said, let's take a look at the ingredients shall we? Okay, as we are actually taking a look at the fish, I kind of wondered to myself one thing. The fish has its common name as the golden snapper, but based on what I really see in this fish, it doesn't seem that gold to me, but well, if you ask me to eat a goldfish, probably I'm not going to eat it. Well, the colour aside, from based on my observations, you can see that this fish has a really, really nice sharp fins which is designed by God. I mean, you look at the fin design. Wow, it's really, really nice to see, though. I wish I get to see the snapper while it's alive and swimming underwater, but oh well, okay. And let's count, there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine fins and one bottom bone and yeah. the next thing that I'm going to say about this fish is going to be about the scales. It looks pretty 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 thick. I'm gonna pluck out a few scales and let you all see this. One scale is pretty much around like my finger size but you know obviously this is not the biggest scale I've seen. The fisherman has kind of like gutted and cleaned the fish for me so this is pretty much ready to use but well I'm gonna fillet the fish so yeah everything is pretty much nice and white over here. What I'm having in mind right now is that I want to use this to make something pretty much normal. I'm gonna make a typical Chinese dish called Kyong Chong Yi. Well it's basically a fish which is cooked with ginger and scallions. Well then, with all that said, let's start the cooking part. Now, the first thing we're going to have to do is going to like take out this with the scissors because of safety reasons before I descale the fish. Now, let's start by removing this part of the fins because it's really, really dangerous. Ow, this is hard. Mm. Oh, oh, this is really hard. Now for the bottom part. This is also really, really sharp. I'm going to have to remove this. Give me a second. Everything is a knife. The, the deba knife will do really well in this. Wow. What kind of bone is inside here? Okay, the fisherman really should have removed this for me. This is a really long bone. Wow. Okay, so now that the fish is pretty much safe to the scale, let's start the messy work. 
Okay, and this is what the fish looks like when it's descaled. The color is pretty much the same though, but oh well, what do you expect? Well, on the next part, we are going to fillet the fish. First thing, we're gonna cut off the head. This, turn the fish around. Wow, the bones is really, really hard. No, never mind, I'll just start with here instead. That's the case. One fillet done. And for the other fillet. Okay, let's see. Well, nothing left on the bones. I'm gonna put the bones aside. And now to remove the belly bones. Remove the belly bones is actually quite easy. To be straightforward and honest, the fish is kinda smelly. Something's telling me that this fish is not caught on the sea. Maybe it's on the brackish waters because of the smell. And here we have it, two fillets of snapper meat. So what I'm going to do with it right now is I'm going to cut this into half and I'm going to make maybe a medium sliced fish out of this. And here you have it, this is pretty much a sliced snapper meat. Well, as for the cutting part of the show, basically I just need three ingredients. A knock of ginger, garlic, and spring onion. So let's start with the spring onion first. First of all, I don't need the roots. Just a little bit trimmings and probably like this. Next, garlic. Well, this is pretty much a basic thing. Okay, that's enough chopped garlic. And last but not least, my ginger. Let's go for a recap on what is the ingredients that we need to make this dish. Sliced ginger, chopped garlic and spring onions. For the next part, we'll be needing, well this is actually soy sauce, this is Chinese wine, sesame oil, fish sauce, pepper and oyster sauce. Because we're doing a Chinese cuisine today, we're going to do something a little bit different in which we're going to cook with our wok. So first thing, I'm going to heat up some oil. And then I'm going to fry the ginger and the garlic. I'm going to add a little bit amount of water. Oyster sauce. Fish sauce. Chinese wine. Soy sauce. Sesame oil. When it's boiling, I'm just going to add a small amount of cornstarch. White pepper. And then in with the fish. About 15 seconds will do. And when the fish is almost cooked into the spring onions, just stir for like 5 seconds and it's done. Alright, fine. Cooking, done. That's pretty much how to cook a typical chong chong yi. Today's cooking is kind of easy, right? <laughs> because we use quite a number of, well, sauces. Well, with all that said, let's see what this thing actually tastes like. I mean, the sauce is going to taste pretty much normal, but the important part is going to be the fish. To tell the truth, when you order this fish in a restaurant, most probably the fish that they will use to cook this dish for you is going to be a siaka, or as I can say, a baramundi. They are restaurants that uses snapper for fish slice but it's gonna be the cheap ones I guess and because of the smell of the fish I think this is actually not a sea fish this is kind of like a brackish water fish well regardless of the situation let's see what the fish tastes like first things first nah, I'm just gonna eat this together as always the moment of truth let's see what this tastes like Ooh. I can see that the fish is a little bit kind of like flaky. The texture of the fish is like, it's firm, but it breaks and melts in your mouth. As a matter of fact, it's kind of good. <laughs> Not bad actually. It has a much more firmer texture when you compare it to the siaka. I'm just going to help myself to another sliced fish. As much as I can see the skin, I don't feel the skin or any other things at all. Well, with all that said, I'm going to end my review now while I finish this meal.
I'm done eating. On today's episode, we have a golden snapper. For the golden snapper, we feel that it has really nice big scales and really sharp fins. It's kind of dangerous, but I can say it's kind of worth it. it. Tastes much better than the siakap when it comes to the texture. The flavor is actually quite not bad as well. It tastes like a typical fish. Price-wise, I can say that the price of a snapper is like double the price of a siakap. I bought this fish for like 30 ringgit per kilo. The amount of meat inside the fish is not that much. As we cook this fish with ginger and scallions, I can feel that the fish doesn't have that much of a brackish water flavor. Before we end this video, I'd like to ask you if you can help me to like, comment and subscribe in this video. Share this to your Facebook page or whatever. And it'll probably make my day to help me develop this channel a little bit longer. Well, I'll see you all next time. Bye!